I, I was going to go ahead then and uh, discuss uh, Professor Huckfeld's presentation as well. And I'm going to actually discuss it from three perspectives. The first is the perspective of a health services researcher. And I parenthetically chair the NCQA HEDIS Diabetes Quality Measures work group. So I've come under, uh, I've gotten a lot of feedback on some of the, the HEDIS quality measures. And I think a historical perspective is, is useful. HEDIS initially as a quality measure chose hemoglobin A1C above 9.5% as a measure of poor control, and so HEDIS actually reported the proportion of people in a health plan with poor glycemic control as assessed by hemoglobin A1C. Both physicians and patients said, well, that's terrible. It implies that anything less than 9.5% is good control. We really don't want to send out that message. So the, the quality measure was reduced to less than 7%. Uh, as the quality measure of, of good care, and it, it immediately became clear that there's no one-size-fits-all measure of uh, diabetes quality or glycemic uh, care, and that to impose such a target as less than 7% for a general population has the real potential to do harm. And so now the goal is, is really to the proportion of patients less than 8%, with the understanding that a target of, of less than 8% would include most patients uh, with diabetes. I'm not sure we have the right answer yet, but I think the evolution is, is instructive. This, the second perspective I want to take is the perspective of a clinical researcher and actually a DCCT investigator. And I think people often cite the DCCT data, but I, I think it's important to, to make it clear that the trial excluded patients less than 13 years of age. And so when we look at pediatric type 1 diabetes, we really don't know what the, the appropriate goal should be. Uh, and that those patients with type 1 diabetes and recurrent severe hypoglycemia were excluded from the DCCT. So we don't really know, again, what an appropriate A1C goal is for someone with type 1 diabetes and recurrent severe hypoglycemia. The other thing I think it's important to remember from the DCCT is the issue of the goal, the achieved hemoglobin A1C, and the guideline. The goal for glycemic management in DCCT was actually to achieve an A1C as near normal as possible, and that was 6.1%. So in fact, the goal in DCCT really was probably 6.1%. Very few people achieved it. This 7% number actually comes from the hemoglobin A1C that was achieved in DCCT. The number was not less than 7%. It was 7.2% achieved by the intensive therapy group. So I'm not sure I think the 7% or less than 7% came as a nice round number, but it's even lower than was really supported based on the, the uh, DCCT data. And finally, I think the rationale for the, the guideline of, of less than 7 or 7.2 percent really comes from a figure in the original DCCT publication which showed the relationship between attained hemoglobin A1C and the risk of complications and attained hemoglobin A1C and the risk of severe hypoglycemia. And obviously, as A1C increased, the risk of complications increased. But as A1C decreased, the risk of hy severe hypoglycemia increased. And 7% or 7.1% was really the point that maximized the benefit and minimized the risks of hypoglycemia in patients with type 1 diabetes.